Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review, and this is Lucky Ladybug by Joshua Ray. Before I do this, very importantly, like and subscribe, even more importantly, check out onlinemagic.co, please. We had a lovely session last night on uh, Invisible Palm Aces, Open Travellers, uh, recorded from a gig it was. And uh, what happens is I go live every Thursday, or nearly every Thursday when I can, and often we have special guests. So there are 150 now of those sessions, and uh, not including that, 800 other videos-ish. Of, um, of cards, coins, ropes, and requests. If you want anything that isn't on there, I can uh, record a session on it. And we have some special guests coming up that's very exciting as well. Talking of special guests, I do have my podcast. Please search Steve Faulkner's Magic Show wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I'm trying to get them out once a week. The, they're long, they're involved, they are joyous, and we've got some great guests coming up on that. So at the moment, they're a bit sort of if and when, but do check out that and check out the Beyond the Wand interviews where I interview magicians about magic and also not magic. So have a look at that and, uh, and the links will be below. Thanks very much. So this is, uh, if any of you have done the web where a spider ends up on someone's hand or My Pet Boris from Ian Pigeon, which is an app that does the same, I have done both to great success. Does that make sense? With great success, to, yeah. They're brilliant. The, the responses are so much fun. Basically, it's a kind of surprise shock thing where there's a magic trick involved, or not sometimes, and they turn the hand over and there's a spider or whatever on the back of it. I've also always loved these effects, and I love things like double cross, as many people do, wherever anybody looks at the hand and there's something on it that wasn't before, it's really, really magical. The problem with uh, the spider ones is that you can't really do it at most gigs because you don't know whether the person has a phobia of spiders. It could go south. It can, can, it's one of those ones where you want to do the routine where you know the person. So this is a kind of answer to that, really. And when I first saw it, I thought, well, it still might, you know, some people might be a bit icky about it. And I wasn't sure. So I took it out to my gig last night and and there'll be a little bit of footage there. I didn't get loads, so I don't like sort of giving the phone to people, but there are a few people there that I'd sort of met before in previous gigs, and I said, look, do you mind filming this? It's a new thing. And the responses were lovely. Not one person freaked out. I've also uh, tried this on a couple of kids, and they didn't really freak out or anything. It's just a really lovely, cute effect. So the effect is they end up with a ladybird, or a ladybug, depending on where you live, on the back of their hand, which is a lot less kind of intrusive. It's a lot less Whoa! sort of thing. Uh, I'm sure it still would be for some people, but the trick that you do to get it there is you show free cards with ladybirds, ladybugs on them, give them one of them. It's vanished. It's good luck if they come back and they wave their hand over the card and the uh, ladybird, ladybug, I can't, I've got to decide, haven't I? Lady, I'm going to say ladybird because that's, that, but then it's called lucky ladybug. I might be overthinking it. I'm very tired because <laughs> I've driven back this morning. Whew. You get the standard way of doing it and you get all, like, all the hints and tips around that. But I, I made a mistake last night because I was so used to doing double cross. I put it on the wrong side of the hand and, I, <laughs> and the guy was like this. And I went, oh, what am I going to do now? And I just kind of improvised around it. And the, it was a bit weird because I put the card on his hand. And it was all a bit icky. But what was really lovely is just on the cuff, you know, when you're in that situation where you've got to say something, I said, the good thing is that, you know, if they come back, it's really good luck. And if you can catch one, it's even better. So I said, catch one like that. Or I don't know if I actually said that, but I made out like he caught one. And then I said, open your hand. And it was like he'd caught it. And I thought that was really nice, actually. So you could just put the cards on a the table. They could, you know, put it down or give it to someone else or whatever. But I love this thing of them catching one and it being in the palm of their hand. So... That was kind of a lovely accidental discovery, which I'll probably uh, do again if I... I just love that thing. Because like, when I do my Miser's Dream, you get a kid kind of, you know, and a lot of people do a Miser's Dream, you get a kid kind of, you know, grabbing something out of the air. It's a really lovely thing. So to open it and there'll be something there when they've had their hand like that, I think is great. So the trick itself, the magic trick part of it is very, very easy. Simple double, very simple double, and even you can get away with not doing that if you know your frustration counts and things like that. The bug bit 
of it being on their hand, for those people that aren't experienced in such things, might be a bit trepidatious about it. They might think, oh, I'm going to get caught. You're not going to get caught. And the lovely thing is, I'm really glad they did this. On the download, he goes into that bit of it, of, of, of when you put the bug on. And it's not one of these three hour, you know, the first bit's like 15, 20 minutes or something. The second bit's 10 minutes. You know, it's one of them where you just get everything you need, but no fluff. And for those of you, again, that are beginners are going to want that reassurance and that reassurance is there. What else is lovely is that there are, you see some performances, as you will see on the trailer, and there are a kind of director's commentary over that performance explaining exactly what's happening and also looking at things like angles, which to me are not a problem at all. There's a bit in one of the downloads where somebody kind of kneels down, they go, oh, the angle's bad. But when you're doing this, you're just going to feel that. And, and again, I don't think that's any type of issue. I was doing this surrounded yesterday. Um, absolutely not a problem. So it's easy, but it is going to need a little bit of confidence. It's really cute. It's really lovely. And I was wondering whether, because it is a smaller object and you haven't got that shock factor, is it going to be a powerful magic trick? And I was really pleasantly surprised. I thought that maybe it wouldn't be. It was. The responses were really, really strong. And one of the issues you might have is that sometimes they don't notice it on there. So you don't get that initial hurt. You, you do it and then you go, look, do it again, again. And then, as he said, if you slow it down, then they realise. And sometimes that's a little bit more magical, even though you might not get that, that sort of gut punch, big response. They kind of, you can see the wonder in their eyes. And I've used word in magic, I know, eyes. Um, wonder. So I don't really have anything negative to say about this. It's a really cute trick. No, it's not a closer. It's easy. It answers all those questions about putting a spider on someone's hands. The only issues are, if there are any, and he does talk about this on the download as well, is that they're very small, so you're going to wonder how to get them into play. You know, Having them in your pocket isn't really possible because they're sticky and all that kind of thing, and they're small. And someone like me, at the end of last night, I had like three in each pocket because I was just sort of dumping them everywhere. So those people might have a little bit of issue with that. Again... He talks about this, and I kind of watched this and thought, oh, yeah, I'll work it out. But it's really important, actually, of how you can get them all ready when you're performing so they're kind of ready to go without sort of just sort of digging in your pockets and trying to find this little ladybird bug. That is easily solvable if you think about it. But with that, I would save this for those gigs where I'm not doing like, you know, 20 tables and get my pockets loaded of stuff. It's something that I definitely do at a gig. Whether I will or not, I don't know. I've got enough stuff that I'm working on at the moment. But it does pass that test of is it strong enough? Is it easy enough? Is it lovely enough? And it works for all ages. So if you're doing a wedding where you're like me, you're mostly a performer for adults or older kids, it's something to have where there are younger kids and they say, can you show us something? And it's, it's just very magical. And, and that's what they've kind of sold this on, the kind of the way that they experience the magic. I think it's really good. It's really strong. It's a lovely thing. When your stickiness goes, he does supply a little bit of something to, to use instead. And my feeling would be that actually I'd rather use that, you know, a bit of putty or something like that, that I can have control over. Uh, because I know the stickiness of that. And for those of you, again, that have done things like double cross, you, after you've done it for a while, you learn how many times you can do it and how long it will last and how to test it and all that. So not an issue. Now, holding out before you do the, what you need to do to put the ladybug in place, it does feel like it's not very solid for me. It's kind of, because it's so small, it's not like a coin when you feel that kind of, it's there. But again, after a couple of times last night, I just knew what to do and I knew where it was. And again, because it's, it's said again a lot, haven't I, again? Because it's small, you can just kind of have it there and they're just not going to pick up because they don't know what's coming up. So I think there's a lot going for this really lovely trick and uh, I think loads of you will get a lot of fun out of it. So that's from Juice Gala and uh, that's Lucky Ladybug. Thank you for sending this to me. I will have it ready to go for those times when it's uh, applicable and the family and all that, they've all loved it. They've all thought it was absolutely brilliant. So uh, you'll become very popular if you have kids, nieces, nephews, and, uh, and you're not a professional magician, because it's, uh, it's one of them. Right, thank you very much. Have a great one. Off you go now. Have a look at the links below. If you want to buy it, do check out the links and uh, check out onlinemagic.co. Go and do that now. Even if you just have a look at it, that would be lovely. Have a look at the podcast, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show. Got some brilliant interviews I'm doing next week, so I'm very, very excited about that. And please do share this or the podcast or write a review of the podcast 
that really does make a massive, massive difference. It's a lot of work, work I love, uh, but it's nice to get that feedback every now and then. Have a good one. Take care. See you later.